ナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナモアミダブツ Welcome once again to Kahului Honganji Buddhist Temple's online Sunday YouTube service. Today is our regular family service、um, and、uh, this video is for October 17th, 2021. So today's service will、um, just be normal service.、Uh, we will begin with the、uh, Chanting of the Vandana Tisarana,、uh, and then we will have the chanting of Gasho to Amida. Following that, we will、uh, recite the Golden Chain of Love, and then I will share a Dharma message with you. After the Dharma message,、uh, we will chant or recite the Metta, the Loving Kindness Meditation, followed by the singing of the Nembutsu, and then I will have some closing words and announcements for you. So I'm so glad that、uh, you are. Able to join us today for our sort of online service and uh,、um, hope that uh, you are, uh, everyone is staying well、um, and、uh, kind of getting back in the swing of things, hope, hopefully, getting, getting back to a sense of, uh, of uh, reality, I think, <laughs> in our day, daily life. So, we'll talk a little bit about reality in our Dharma message today. So, thank you very much for being here. Let's begin our service now by putting our hands together in Gasho. And reciting the Nembutsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida. This 
light shines throughout the world, I go show to Amida. Flowers bloom and flowers fall. From the seeds sprout new flowers. This is the truth unchanging. I go show to Amida. Springtime brings the happy birds. Their songs all praise Amida. I join them in Nembutsu. I go show to Amida. When I call Amida's name, it's Amida calling me. Buddha's voice, my voice are one. I go show to Amida. When I'm lonely, I recite Namo Amida Butsu. Then I feel great compassion. I go show to Amida. Nembutsu in work and play every day with Amida, every moment filled with light. I go show to Amida. Remember the golden chain, kindness to all. I go show to Amida in the clear bright morning sun in the fading light of day in the darkness of the night I go show to Amida Namo Amida Butsu, I live in great compassion. This great power guides my life. I go show to Amida. Golden Chain of Love I am a link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love that stretches around the world. I must keep my link bright and strong. I will try to be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect all who are weaker than myself. I will try to think pure and beautiful thoughts, to say pure and beautiful words, and to do pure and beautiful deeds knowing that on what I do now depends not only my happiness or unhappiness, but also that of others. May every link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love
become bright and strong, and may we all attain perfect peace. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Welcome once again. And uh, I'd like to share a few thoughts about the Buddha's teaching with you, about the Buddha's d Buddha Dharma. Um, uh, would you please uh, join me as we begin these reflections with our hands together and, and as we recite the Nembutsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Well, good morning or afternoon or whenever you're watching this video. So, um, I was just, I was thinking back, of, here at Kahului Hanganji, before the whole COVID thing happened, we used to have a, every Sunday, we'd have a pre-service quiet sitting session um, before our, our Sunday service. And uh, so it was, uh, we'd take about 20 minutes or so and just sit in a, uh, in a, in a very simple form of meditation which involves just being aware of the natural process of breathing in and breathing out and just trying to let go of our need to control and be distracted by some activity or another thoughts, at least for a few minutes, you know. And um, if you try this, if you've never tried to meditate at all, and you try basic kind of Buddhist meditation, you'll quickly learn that your mind just doesn't want to let go. You learn a lot about yourself just in a few minutes. Um, and it even tries to speed up. You try to slow your mind down, calm, and your mind speeds up. And it, and it thinks of a thousand, a thousand and one things uh, to worry about, to fantasize about, to fret about, whatever it is. And uh, you can try to control those thoughts and try to stop them, but that often just makes it worse. So you just have to keep coming back to, your, to the breath. So our... The reason is that it's called in Buddhism the monkey mind, you know, jumping around all over the place. It, that's our ego, our ego mind. And it just doesn't want to give up control. Our ego is always seeking to dominate and control everything in the world. And uh, that's how big we think we are, how important we human beings think we are. You know, we want to control everything. And uh, our ego very, really resists having its grandiose illusions about itself diminished in any way. And meditation is a sure way to diminish our grandiose illusions about ourselves. So our ego doesn't like it when you start, when you try to meditate at first, you know. But actually, you know, the whole purpose of religion, I don't care what religion, uh, any real religion, Buddhism, Christianity, whatever it is, uh, Islam, Judaism, you know, any real religion, the real goal is to leave behind that selfish self. That, and, and to find our true self, whatever we call that, we're looking for our true self, not that selfish self, that ego self. So long ago, uh, the ancient Buddhist monks, you know, worked hard to practice different forms of taming, of training the mind, and they discovered techniques to help um, trick our, our minds into letting go. And uh, the fundamental meditation technique that they developed is, is very simple. It's sort of the beginning, but it's also the core of everything. And uh, so you just have to remember to return to your breath. Whenever your mind starts to wander, you return to your breath. Oh, yes, I'm, re I'm, I'm breathing in. Oh, yes, I'm breathing out. You just keep coming back to your breath. Your breath is like the voice of the Buddha. Your breath is Amida Buddha. So you don't, even, you don't need to have an altar and a statue like we have behind me. You know, All you have to have is your breath. And uh, it's the voice of the Buddha calling us to just let go and, and, and return to the fundamental, your breath. Uh, not what is external and only rooted in our, our, our desires and fantasies and so on. The breath is fundamental to life, to every moment of your living. It's always there. It's always sustaining us. And, uh, but we take it for granted, completely for granted, of course. But then, but that's because we take all good things for granted. Ever, all good things that we receive, we take for granted. And we hardly, hardly ever stop and notice the myriad blessings that we're receiving every moment. We only want to think about the things we want 
you know, what I want to have, what, I'd li what I want to do, you know, the attention I'd li I want to receive, you know, all the things I want, I want. But actually, it's a great blessing. It's the greatest blessing just to be able to breathe. If you stop and notice, I am breathing. I am breathing in. I am breathing out. Now I'm breathing in. And now I'm breathing out. It's enough. That's enough. When we begin to do that, our, our, all our distractions, our ego thoughts, become no big deal. Um, they only bother us when we pay too much attention to them. If we try to crush them or control them, they take over. They really take over. But if we just say, they're there, okay, like little children, go and play. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to focus on what's really important. We don't, we don't uh, give the thoughts too much attention. We just let them go. You know, oh, I had the thought about this, I thought about that, worry about this. Oh, there's a thought about how I hate that person, or here's a thought about how I'm mad about this, or here's a thought about how I'm, I, I, I can't wait to do this, you know. Let it go and just go back to the breath. That's meditation. That's Buddhist meditation. After a while, appreciating every inward breath, every outward breath, our mind does start to relax and realizes that it's okay just to be quiet, to just breathe, to just rest in stillness and solitude, to just be in the moment of living just as it is. We really need quiet and solitude in our lives. Unfortunately, the world is now an extremely noisy place and it's getting noisier all the time. We are always caught up in the busyness of everyday life. There's always something to do and worry about. Always something distracting us. We're always distant, uh, distracting ourselves with the TV or some other form of, of media. Since the invention of the internet, and especially since the appearance of smartphones, and I, I, I would put them in quote, I would put the word smart in quote, since these smartphones came along, people now never have a moment's peace. Whether we're checking the news, email, text messages, Facebook, Twitter, or any number of other so-called social media, and I say so-called because the, in a sense, all this, all this uh, social media distances us from one another, not doesn't bring us together. But since, since all this came about, we're always looking for new distractions. We're always needing the distracting images or sounds that our devices and computers provide us to keep our minds jumping around, you know, active. Um, not resting in any kind of quiet or stillness. In fact, we're scared of that quiet and stillness. Those of you um, who are a little bit older may remember when daily newspapers, well, if you remember daily, <laughs> if you remember newspapers, but if you remember when the newspaper was mostly printed text, right? The whole big sheet, and they were bigger too, you know, they were much bigger than anything that's still remaining. Not much left of newspapers now, but um, uh, they, they were mostly text, and there'd just be a few small little black and white pictures, just to you know, uh, important something important to illustrate the uh, the uh, the news story. Now, what's left of newspapers? Um, uh, it's mostly big color pictures. They're almost like comic, like comic strips, you know, except not as interesting. <laughs> but most people now get their news, or a lot of younger people anyway, get their news. Um, actually, they get a constant stream of news, or what's called news anyway, from the internet, and it's dominated by, by images, not just, not just, um, you know, not just still images to illustrate the story, but, but you know, lots of images, and, and it's often they're flashing and moving, they're not even staying still and they're very colorful and, and there's all kinds of ads flashing and trying to get our attention on, on the article, on the page, wherever we're reading uh, this or that news story. And uh, everything's in constant motion. And um, 
we, we get addicted to all that activity, just looking at it, and we get addicted to, to the act of always checking, forever finding out what's going on in our, in our magic digital devices. How many times a day, if you've noticed, if you have a smartphone, um, how many times a day do you check it? Do you pull it out and look at it and see what's, what's going on? If you're a younger person, you, prob you may not even be able to count the number of times a day you pull out your phone to check it. But even us older, phones, uh, older folks are getting, uh, adi becoming addicts, uh, constantly texting each other, checking email, uh, and so on. There have been a number of studies uh, lately which show that many people, especially younger people who have grown up with computers and the internet, are suffering greatly from internet addiction. Sometimes this can take the form of very serious mental illness and can result in dangerous and destructive behavior. In, in any case, this addiction to our screens, all these screens in our lives, is a tremendous distraction from real life. In fact, I want to make a strong point here. I want to insist and, to, and remind you that what exists, what you see on your phone and your computer screen is not real. Some of the information you glean there may be useful and important to know, of course. You, you, you go to the computer, look up something, try to find some piece of information. You have, an, you have an important piece of information to communicate with someone, you write an email and so on. Of course, I understand that. Uh, that that's that's uh, uh, something we do, just like when we wrote letters and so on. But the totality of our powerful and growing addiction to these glowing, flashing screens is really a dangerous distraction. It seems it's become like normal. It seems normal in the course of your everyday life to be constantly looking at these things, but it's not. It's a dangerous distraction, and it's separating us from real life, and it's making us passive and it's making us accept conditions in the world around us that are worsening all the time that are not at all acceptable, that shouldn't be accepted, and uh, which we should be doing something about. These many distractions are actually robbing us of compassion and concern for others and making us indifferent to the suffering around us. Digital media deludes us into thinking that we are seeing and understanding reality. But the fact is, we are not. The endless flashing entertainments, that's mainly what it is. The, the, all this endless entertainment we're consuming is manipulating us into thinking that we are connected to others and that we care. But in truth, they are, it is actually holding us prisoner, keeping our attention and our minds firmly locked to the images on our screens so that we are blind to the real condition of those around us. The information we consume is not inspiring us to speak out or take action to right wrongs, but rather it is keeping us passive. Or conversely, uh, all this distraction, this, these distracting, flashing you know, screens uh, that we are constantly looking at appeal to our ego and emotions. Um, they're always appealing to our emotions, our feelings, stirring up strong feelings, anger, outrage, and directing us away from the real causes of today's problems. The digital world of distraction is, a, is indeed a very powerful and dangerous force, uh, especially if it's misused, and I believe it is being seriously misused. So our fixation with the digital virtual, virtual world creates serious and profound problems. We now have such powerful systems of technology that most of us have become isolated and disconnected from ourselves and from the real world. We exist in a state of hallucination, mesmerized by the virtual reality we, we devote our attentions to. And so we have been robbed of all quiet and solitude. You might think that after all these many months of the COVID-19 pandemic, that we have indeed experienced a lot of solitude. After all, we've been, many of us have been alone a lot. 
um, because we have been so isolated from people. It's true we have been isolated, but isolation is not necessarily solitude. And if our eyes and minds have been locked onto our computer screen, even if in, if in conference with others through Zoom meetings and so on, we have not really been experiencing either connection or solitude. We have been locked in a coercive fantasy world that drains our creative energy and renders us depressed and passive. As the great journalist, social critic, and activist Chris Hedges has pointed out, whatever you consume through media is not a real experience. It manipulates you into thinking you have that you have experienced something real, but you have only experienced a phantom of reality. The internet and all the devices we carry around have become tools that, if misused, make it impossible to truly think and cut us off from what is real. So true solitude means that our minds return to the here and now and are free to think and reflect deeply. They're not distracted. Solitude is a state of inner quiet, which by the way, the outer quiet of meditation can really help us to, to find, to discover that inner quiet. However, to experience the quiet of solitude also means to come face to face with one's true self. And that's a meeting which we do not always find pleasant or welcome. We all like to believe in our inherent goodness, our normalness, our, our kindness. I'm just a regular guy, a good person, you know? And we like to hide from, the, from all the evidence of our own intolerance, hatred, ignorance, arrogance, and greed. It's much easier to embrace the many distractions that life, especially modern media, offers us because these allow us to squelch the frightening quiet and avoid any hint of solitude and thus to continue to hide from ourselves. More importantly, all the noise with which we have surrounded ourselves makes any possibility of change, of inner or outer change, of transformation within ourselves or in the world around us impossible. Tragically, all the noise around us pre prevents us from awakening to the preciousness of each moment of life. And without this awareness, we will certainly waste our whole lives one way or another. In Jodo Shinshu, it is said that we don't need to meditate. We don't try to perfect ourselves or to gain virtue or merit so that we can become enlightened, which is a more of a conventional way that Buddhism is understood by, by, many, by many people. Um, and Jodo Shinshu kind of rejects that. Uh, to put it simply, Jodo Shinshu understands that we are embraced by the mind of Amida Buddha, which is the mind of true awakening. So we are embraced by this perfection and awakening already. But in today's world, it's absolutely essential for us to, to consider, to, to realize that for most of the history of human beings, the world was quiet. It was full of quiet, quiet places. And there were lots of opportunities to get away and to stop the noise and be alone with oneself, to return to solitude, to the present moment of life. People didn't always take advantage of that. But you know, uh, before all this media, there was quiet. You know, you could get away from the noise, from the constant distraction. Today, we can't. It's, it's very difficult. We desperately need to take some kind of action, each of us in our life, to reclaim that quiet and solitude, which are absolutely necessary if one is to, to live a truly human life. Whether it is meditation, reading, chanting, or anything else, just go, finding a quiet room somewhere, going in there and sitting quietly, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We need that. We need to, to take action to get that quiet. Um, we, we, des we desperately need to put away the noise to the incessant distractions and come back to ourselves, not to achieve anything, not to become 
perfect or better or en more enlightened or whatever, actually seeking those things is just, e is just more ego, just the same as seeking material things. It sounds better, but uh, uh, desiring something for oneself to Im be better, to improve oneself, to make oneself happiness, happier and so on, is, is still continuing that pattern of kind of looking for something outside of oneself. We have to find that inner quiet, that inner self, uh, which we only can find in, 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 in the, when our mind is quiet. Um, but, you know, we don't, we do that, we, we should find this quiet in our life uh, just to return to, to being, uh, to, to what it feels like to be a real human being who is appreciative of and aware of the world, uh, the world and, every, and everyone in it. We have to find a way back to that quiet and solitude that is the birthright of every person so that we can hear, maybe for the first time, the calling voice of life and compassion within ourselves. The fact is that because of the unceasing distractions that modern life has forced upon us, most of us have lost our inner life and our awareness of what is real. Um, it's just dissipated within us. So if you have even the faintest intuition that your life means more than just getting what you want, proving yourself, you know, living up to the standards of others and so on, uh, if you sense that there is something more you need to do with this brief and unknown span of life that we have been given, then we all absolutely need to begin to create that quiet space to, to carve it out, even indeed to demand it, uh, where we can discover who we are, discover our true self, and find our true purpose. Um, and so maybe we can begin by turning off all the noise and claiming at least a few minutes of true quiet every day. Um, or maybe more than a few minutes. This is one case where more is always better. So I, I hope you will try to find a little quiet in your life and see what a difference that that can make uh, and to not only uh, your, the, your mind, not only Im as something that improves life, but, but even more so that and how you look at things, uh, how, how we, we change our, the way we look at things when we discover that quiet within ourselves. So thank you very much for listening. And now let us put our hands together and recite the Nembutsu. I think that the Nembutsu uh, really expresses that realization of that inner reality that we all have kind of lost and it's there but we are we are we for, we 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 have just so c walled it out covered you know uh, uh, covered it up with so much noise so namo amida butsu the calling the voice that we say it's the voice of the buddha namo means to let go to to surrender to bow right and uh, amida is boundless life the totality of things the oneness of things every moment we are al already there, already in the eternity, the oneness of things. To hear that voice, Namo Amida Butsu, just let go and realize that you were embraced by boundless light, boundless life. Already that, that wakes us up to that inner quiet, that inner solitude that we need so desperately to be able to live our life purposefully and meaningfully. So thank you very much for listening and let's, let's Put our hands together and recite the Nembutsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May I be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to me. May I live in peace and harmony. May my family be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my teachers be happy and well. 
May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my friends be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May strangers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my enemies be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo. Well, thank you very much for joining us today for our Kahului Hanganji online uh, YouTube Sunday service. I hope today's service was uh, meaningful for you and that you were able to take away something uh, helpful. Uh, and uh, wish you all a very good week. Uh, before we uh, close, though, I'd like to ha share a few announcements with you. First of all, upcoming services. So our online um, YouTube services, uh, we will have... Um, uh, this month, October 21st, that's next Sunday, will be a service, and then October 31st, uh, there will be no service. So that's the fifth Sunday. Usually we don't have services on f when we have a fifth Sunday. Um, in the month of November, we will be having online uh, services every week, every uh, Sunday, November 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th. And the 28th will also be our Eitaikyo uh, major service and family gratitude service. Um, I forgot to say also that next week, October 24th, will be our family gratitude service as well. Uh, but anyway, in the month of November, every Sunday, uh, we will have a, a YouTube video. Uh, the 28th will be our, our major service. Uh, and probably we will also have an in-person service on November 28th. I'm not sure yet, but uh, just uh, keep that tentatively. Uh, so we try to get a, you know uh, take baby steps and get back into having uh, in-person services in the in the temple here, uh, as well as the videos, of course. Um, announcements. I have uh, one announcement that um, it's a little bit uh, uh, coming up soon, but there will be a, a special a special uh, presentation online uh, from the um, uh, uh, 
a, a Jodo Shinshu uh, Educational Center in, in Berkeley. And um, this will be a, um, f called Faith and Science, Awake Awakening Compassion for the, f for the Future. So Faith and Science, Awakening Compassion for the Future. And this is, uh, presentation is going to be about energy, about sustainable uh, sources of energy. And it will feature a talk by Dr. Miriam Hinostraza, who is the head of the Global Climate Action Unit uh, in the U uh, a part of the UN Environmental Program. And there'll also be a panel of religious uh, leaders. And um, uh, this will be October 30th, Saturday, October 30th. Now, um, in um, the uh, Pacific, Pacific time, 11 to 1, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. But here in Hawaii, the time will be uh, three hours earlier, so it will be 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And uh, if, you w if you watch afterwards the uh, uh, scrolling text, there'll be a link, uh, uh, information about registering for this. You have to register for it. It's free, but you have to register. And uh, that will be, and also I'll put it in the box below, uh, the video. Uh, the uh, registration information, okay? And uh, then, once again, we are having our Maui Nem Nembutsu seminar on, uh, on November 13th and 14th. That's a Saturday and Sunday. And uh, that will be featuring the uh, Reverend Ken Fujimoto. Um, it is like, kind of like all day Saturday and uh, half of the day Sunday. And if you have, um, uh, if you are not able to attend um, in person, I believe we will also be having a, an online version of it. So we'll more information as, as we get closer. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, once again, I'd like to wish you a wonderful week. And let's put our hands together in Gasho and recite the Nembutsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu.